What's up guys, War here, and today we're gonna go over all the news from the Diablo 4 developer stream for season three. Let's do it. Okay guys, so we just finished watching the developer campfire stream update. It just ended about six or seven minutes ago, so I didn't stream it unfortunately because of the time jump. So we're just reacting to it. I wanted to give you guys my thoughts so let's hop right into this okay um let me just start off and say that i'm not super excited uh there's a lot of fails here but there's also some really good stuff from adam jackson so big shout out to adam jackson uh but yeah let's go ahead and talk about a few of this stuff so they give a really really boring intro but uh we end up getting some really good information for the brand new seasonal content uh coming in where you get to do all this brand new stuff okay so how this new seasonal content is going to work is from these stone caches and they're basically adopting the way to be able to do these is like the sigil system you're going to be able to get the stones which you're going to be able to use to upgrade your characters and or not your not even your character just your little pet here um, they didn't even talk about the buffs that it gives to your character. So they did say that your your little companion here, the damage does scale with you. So it's like having an additional you, I suppose. Uh, but nothing really that supports the character itself. So you can see that like when you're going through, you get to go through the dungeon and complete these little traps and just really go through and kind of experience this new brand new mechanic um, with the trap vault now I do want to mention one thing about the vault is uh, completing this although they did say we are going to get rewards that there is no additional drop increase for for uber uniques you will still have to do that for Duriel in the vaults uber uniques can still drop but it's the very very low percentage just like in everything else in the game so if you still want to get Uber Uniques, the best chance is still to do Duriel. So I do think that that is a huge L, huge L on the devs part. But you can see that like the little companion just kind of helps you fight. Uh, they didn't mention that any of the runes that you put on the companion really buff you as the player. So it's basically just buffing the companion that does things. But when you do think about it, there is runes that like, hey, the companion can make the monster vulnerable which is really good you know it can stun them that's cool uh but outside of that it doesn't really give you a power scaling buff or chasing power is what they described in the dev stream like the vampiric powers do they kind of buffed us a little bit these don't apply any buffs whatsoever it's more of like a support so that's that's kind of nice uh i guess so <clears throat> You get to do the um, additional combat. We still got the same monsters with the Tomb Lord, which is great. Uh, now they go over to talk about the leaderboard. So overall for the the like brand new vault mechanic is you're going to be able to go in here and do this. You can do this from a nightmare fashion. So you can do it with a nightmare difficulty, which is similar to doing nightmare dungeons. Um, and it just makes it a little bit tougher. However, there isn't any crazy additional rewards no increase to uber unique drops you're just going to be basically getting like <clears throat> normal gear drops and stuff that you would like doing a nightmare dungeon so uh overall uh i'm not too excited about this it seems like it's going to take a long time um group play is very finicky for this i think the players are going to be able to figure out a way to kind of cheese this a little bit and it's not going to make for a experience that a lot of players are going to want to do over and over again, considering the rewards are basically nothing. So although this may seem like a cool mechanic, you are going to have to do this and to be able to get some of the stones to put on your companion here. Uh, I mean, I think, I think the trap thing is kind of cool. I guess it kind of reminds me of labs from path of exile, but Overall, very disappointing considering once we found out not only the rewards are subpar, but we're not getting any uber uniques. So um, this, this, the vault thing just seems kind of cool. You're going to be able to do the boss and the boss is going to be stationary and you're going to be able to fight the boss and 
just kind of get some cool powers and it's just going to kind of be a thing so uh, overall the season mechanic just doesn't seem too exciting whatsoever but i don't know you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below uh okay so let's get over to the leaderboards okay they mentioned the leaderboards again okay the leaderboards are here again we're not getting them at the start of the season so a huge l for the devs there these are going to rotate every week um again the leaderboard dungeon there is no restrictions you can do it as many times as you want however again it is the same exact dungeon over and over again the monsters are placed in the same exact spot and so really it's just going to come down to mastering the exact linear path that you're going to have to take whoever figures it out and then you're probably going to have to play the build that does that the best so you're probably going to have to play the build that you know can destroy monster pack from a b c d complete the fastest and <clears throat> however with that is going to come hey not every build is going to be able to do that so i don't know i'm not too excited about leaderboards i'm even more disappointed with the fact that we're not getting them at the start of the season because they don't want people to just rush to this however that's one of the most exciting things about doing it in diablo 3 is being able at the brand new start of a season go through get there get rank one and then as the season continues you just have people kind of climb over so very big l from the devs there not only on the seasonal theme but the um the uh, the the leaderboards as well so let's get into the um seasonal journey this was a topic that they brought up i didn't even know that the community felt pretty bad about the rewards um, i knew the rewards were always bad from the first two seasons However, they did amp them up, but they did amp up our seasonal rewards last season during the season of blood, which was just, hey, a thousand blood shards, which did nothing. So uh, apparently they're going to be giving us containers that contain 925 item power. And then the other thing that they mentioned in the dev stream is once we get up to the higher levels here to complete those, we're going to be getting more stones to put into the new companion, which is the, the companion for the seasonal theme. Uh, again, that's probably going to be a very minimal number to upgrade things, which is exactly the same thing as Season of Two or Season of Blood. So not looking forward to that. Um, apparently, they had a large amount of players that were not completing the seasonal journey because the wards were basically very below par. Nobody really cared about doing all of these challenges to get nothing. So uh, now they're doing the increase to the items of your companion. And now we'll be able to get some scattered prisms and shattered stone pearls of warding and 925 item power ancestral legendary items so we'll see if they give us this more often times than not then maybe that would be worth it but again very bad take there cosmetics all cosmetics are always super cool they did bring more cosmetics back um it does cost a lot for these um we get however there was a very positive response to the town portal um changes where you can have customized town portals i do think i will say that they need to adopt this from poe where we need to be able to customize our characters fully not only with our regular gear pieces but the same thing our town portals horses characters we need wings we just need more animated stuff around us something to really make your character shine so you know it's you uh so that i definitely think they need to do that i think that's just really really good um then we do have a quick still shot of the seasonal blessings that are coming so all of this is pretty much the same um the shrine effects which is cool and then greater chance to get whisper rewards this is actually a new one urn of whispers boost the chance to receive a greater collection of whisper rewards this is huge for not only just in general but to have more chances to get more whisper rewards so that way we can farm varshan so that way we can farm durial that's a big dub at least there um, and then there's the additional tuning stones, which is for the seasonal content. So I do really do like this. Um, and then of course your EXP. So that's a big dub there with the urn of whispers. I think that one is definitely, definitely important. Now, if you can muster through getting for through the first 50 minutes of this stream, which was, let me tell you, it was tough. Um, now we get into Adam Jackson. They bring Adam Jackson in and he really acts. He just shines, man. Shout out to Adam Jackson again 
Um, we talk about a lot of season changes. The patch notes for all of this stuff in more detail is going to come tomorrow, guys. Today's the 18th. It'll come tomorrow. So there, I will do another video for you guys on that. But just to kind of brief through, there is some class updates. They did some main stuff here. They buffed charge. Okay. Uh, they buffed charge for the barbarian. They buffed conjuration for the sorcerer. They're buffing... Um, buffs to underuse skills for the rogue like especially range this is huge they're making many updates to range builds to make them more viable and fun i really like this because i absolutely love playing penetrating shot um i really really devs give us multi-shot please get rid of barrage and give us multi-shot for the love of god um druid there's some more stuff coming to the spirit boons and enhanced rabies which is cool and then necromancer uh buffs to some of the minions which is cool um, they are changing a few of the legendary nodes, which I think is great. Um, and then, of course, we got two brand new Uber Uniques. Or not Uber Uniques, but two Uniques. These are two that they're showing off. Of course, you guys already know that there's always new ones to every class. But because I'm a Sork main, the one I'm most excited about is the Starfall Cornet. It's going to be a meteor-based um unique helm so it allows us to have just a meteor build i'm very very excited about this it looks really really cool it's going to be like tal rashes from diablo 3 very very excited about that i wonder how that's going to interact with a lot, of, uh, a lot of the other gear pieces for the sork so i'm excited to start that then there's also the one for the um aesthetic wraps for the druid which is going to be all about lightning storm and doing additional crits for lightning storm i think this is going to be great lightning storm is very very like underused i think and I think more Druids should probably play Lightning. It just seems so much better if I can get this going. There we go. It adds additional strikes each time it grows and more crit. It's just really, really strong. So then they give a kind of like how they're going to do class balancing going forward, which I think is really fun. But the way Adam Jackson kind of broke it down the best is... There's going to be a seasonal roadmap that they're going to do every season. And I agree with part of this. And then another part of it is not, I'm not too thrilled about, which we'll talk about in just a second. So this is kind of how it's going to work. Um, the roadmap here. So what they're going to be doing is two updates per season. We got the launch, which is going to implement all the changes. And then a mid season update where they will do balancing. Okay. So with the seasonal launch, you got the new legendaries and uniques. You got balance updates buffs nerfs bug fixes etc but not only that to the classes they got updates for monster systems and drop rates and then larger ones will come um not every season but when they're ready like the resistance and combat changes which they did in season two and then new content like avatar of zero which i think was just a big fail on most most of it mid-season patch this will bring back favorite designs like we had with the malignant rings which I absolutely love I'm glad they brought those back. They can be legendaries, uniques, one per class, and then seasonal designs from previous seasons, which I think is cool. Always having this option to bring stuff in, I think is fantastic for the game. Um, next, they got the balancing updates, smaller amount of updates, other games, buffs for each classes, bugs. Now, what I want to get into is kind of how he explains things. So as a mid-season patch would be where they would nerf or buff or not buff but nerf nerf a skill or fix a bug because they're gonna try their best to not nerf anything like they did in season two if they don't have to so as an example he goes through here is violent hammer of the ancients is always there and that is super strong so in the mid-season they would fix this okay but ossified essence where into season two they nerfed it now would the this be too strong it's a question mark they may not like nerf this but they probably wouldn't fix it in a mid-season update and just let it ride which i do think is cool it kind of brings some balancing there um but the balance roadmap is kind of how this works it's kind of nice that they're going to kind of do that and just let things go they want some builds to still be strong but not have stuff be you know they don't want hoda to be the strongest build for five seasons and just kind of pigeonhole people into playing just particular classes so i do think that's a good thing but it also sucks it kind of goes back to what i've talked about in previous videos where they nerf good things and don't buff enough strong things so or buff 
other things. So we'll see in the, spa the patch notes tomorrow and just kind of see what they um, what they do. So of course they got um, WSAD come in. They got skill tree respect, gold trading, and then higher item scaling in World Tier Four, which is very important. This basically is just them talking about how they're going to bring in more opportunities in all of the different content that you can do in world tier four to give us higher item power because again you can actually get you know item power very early on hey i'm level 65 or i'm i just hit 70 i'm in world tier four i already got my gear pieces now for 30 levels to level 100 i no longer have to get any gear so we need more higher item scaling drops so that way we can be able to perfect our builds or and or min max them uh, so after that, there's a really good monologue here of him going into the team's thoughts um, on balancing. Definitely check that out, guys, if you haven't seen it. But that's pretty much it. And then they go into the Q&A. So overall, I, I just, I don't know. I'm not very excited for the seasonal content whatsoever. I think it's going to basically just be just like um, Avatar of Zir for 95% of the player base. They're going to go in, do it once. Because they've already stated that the lack of rewards are not going to be anything of any significance. Uh, I think players are going to go in and experience it, you know, a few times. And then after that, that's it. They're just going to move on, especially if they want to get uber uniques. We're going to have to go do Durial stuff, which is going to draw us away from the brand new content. I don't know why that isn't there. Uh, but yeah, kind of a big L when it comes to that stuff. So we'll see how this goes. Leaderboards is a huge L again. Having it wait a month is just absolutely ridiculous because there's players that want to do just that. They're not going to want to do experience the brand new content like the devs want us to. Again, that's forcing them, forcing, they're forcing us to play they want, or they're forcing us to play the game they want or how they want it to be played as opposed to people who just want to get in. They just want to, you know, speed run their player to whatever level, go do the leaderboards, and that's all they want to do. Now you're forcing players to do you know, this seasonal content and other things, just sitting and waiting. So you're going to have a portion of players that are just going to, you know, hurry it. They'll, they'll start at the season, play their character to 100, sit and chill. And then when leaderboards hit, then they'll play again, which is just a bad, a bad take. Uh, but a few of the balance changes I think are good. I can't wait to read those tomorrow. But yeah, guys, overall, I think season three is probably going to be an L. Um, Although I am very, very excited to play the Meteors with my sword. So I will be doing that. Like the video, guys. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the dev stream. The link will be down in the description below. Let me know what you guys think about the season overall as a whole. And if you're excited, not excited, what changes would you make, etc. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, guys. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.